One of, this, one, of, one of Barack Obama's great gifts is the ability to say things that are absolutely absurd <laughs> and make them sound not only plausible but inspiring. But there, there are so many people among the intel, intelligentsia, especially, who are absolutely immune to facts. It's as, as, if, they, it's as if they took their uh, anti-fact shots uh, every, every, every year and uh, the facts will just not affect us. Yeah, I mean, you were mentioning economists, uh, Paul Krugman, the New York Times uh, columnist as well, said that it's a big nothing burger. The tax is a nothing burger. Nancy Pelosi said that it hasn't amounted to being nearly as advantageous for average folks. Uh, as was thought, Marco Rubio saying he wishes individuals got more out of this than we thought. What, what, are, they, what are they saying and what, what are you saying? I'm not at all sure what, what, what they're saying. Uh, again, uh, the short-term numbers don't usually tell you a lot. Uh, if I look back at the prior statements of uh, Paul Krugman and Nancy Pelosi, I do not have an awful lot of confidence and uh, I'll give a lot of weight to what they say. What about Paul Krugman? They've been wrong big time uh, before. Yeah. What about Paul Krugman? Of course, he was never a fan of the tax. Are you worried about that one adding to the deficit? Not so much the eight and a half to nine trillion dollars in added spending. That will be added to the deficit and, and debt over the years. But what did you make of it? Well, uh, uh, again, uh, you're right that, that Krugman takes this position. Uh, he's taken a lot of positions which are indefensible. Uh, so I'm not the least bit surprised uh, that he's taken another one. The fatal misstep of intellectuals is assuming that superior ability within a particular realm can be generalized to superior wisdom or morality overall. Chess grandmasters, musical prodigies, and others who are as remarkable within their respective specialties as intellectuals within theirs seldom make that mistake. Noam Chomsky, mm -hmm. whom you write about in Intellectuals yeah. in Society, whose work in linguistics, in the first place I can't understand it, but as best I can tell, Everyone who exactly. Everyone who understands his technical work within the field, within his discipline of linguistics, mm -hmm. considers him one of the great figures of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And his work in politics? Uh, uh, absurdity. The same could be said of uh, Bertrand Russell and his, and his uh, uh, landmark works on, on mathematics and other people in other fields. Uh, but they step outside their field. And uh, when you step outside your level of uh, specialty, sometimes that's like st stepping off a cliff. And why is it that intellectuals, that is to say people whose end product is ideas, should succumb to that temptation more than, to use your example, a chess grandmaster? Because a, a chess grandmaster can be world famous for doing absolutely nothing more than winning chess tournaments and making displays, as many of them do, of playing uh, five chess games uh, simultaneously while blindfolded. But intellectuals, what they they well they uh, la they languish we, in obscurity for, for, no matter well, how smart. Well, the whole question of uh, when is someone well known or not uh, came up during the visit of Jim uh, Jim Flynn from uh, uh, New Zealand here a few years ago. He's one of the world's authorities on IQ tests. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, in India know about Jim Flynn. People in England, he's going. He made a world tour. Uh, but I doubt if the people in the next block from where he lives knows who he is, know, know who he is. If, if Noam Chomsky had just kept on stating in linguistics, neither of us probably would have ever heard of Noam Chomsky. He would have been just as famous around the world among linguists, but w nobody else would have heard of him. What do you make of, of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? She has this growing movement even among some people who historically haven't been particularly persuaded by the socialist meme, I mean, she's, but there's something about her that, that seems to be very popular. Do you think it's going to continue or, or will she fall flat? I don't know. Again, it depends upon whether people go by facts or by rhetoric. If they go by rhetoric, she's a rising star. Now, 
I would like you to take a look at a brief video of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who at the age of 29, calling herself a democratic socialist, has just been elected to the House of Representatives from New York. And although she's not seated yet in the new Congress, she went to Washington, and one of her first acts was to participate in a sit-in in the offices of House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi. That is to say, her, the leader of her own party. Yes. So here's a brief video. I just want to let you all know how proud I am of each and every single one of you for putting yourselves and your bodies and, and everything on the line to make sure that we save our planet, our generation, and our future. And it's so incredibly important. We have to get to 100% renewable energy in 10 years. There is no other option. Tom, <laughs> to her supporters, to the supporters of Bernie Sanders, to young Americans, what would you say? I would say get, get, get some facts first, know what you're talking about before you start spouting out this kind of stuff. A recent YouGov poll found that 19% of millennials, one in five young Americans, holds a favorable view of communism. Yes. Now, let me quote one of these young millennials, a new member of Congress, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who represents the Bronx, not all that far from where you grew up. Quote, to me, capitalism is irredeemable. Close quote. Tom Sowell replies. To me, she's irredeemable. <laughs> all right, don't, don't. But to the, okay, so let's, let's set Al Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to one side. When Hillary Clinton said, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, uh, and someone said it takes a village idiot to believe that. <laughs> uh, you know, what they're saying is they want to come in there and tell them. You see, it's, it's part of the whole thing of third parties wanting to make decisions for which they pay no price when, they, when, when they're wrong. You see, when, 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 the, when the parent raises the child the wrong way, the parent pays the price when the child goes down the tubes. But these third parties can sit back in their air, wherever, they're, wherever they are, Washington or whatever, and if the things they tell us turn out to be wrong, it doesn't hurt them. My attitude is that if, if the economy is good for folks from the bottom up, it's going to be good for everybody. If you've got a plumbing business, uh, you're going to be better off if you've got a whole bunch of customers who can afford to hire you. And right now, everybody's so pinched that business is bad for everybody. And, and I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. Spread the wealth around in the name of greater equality for bus drivers and plumbers and construction workers. What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong is the track record of spreading the wealth around. Uh, what has happened around the world and what is happening under the Obama administration is an attempt to spread, attempts to spread the wealth are in fact spreading poverty. Why? Because you attack the people who are creating the most wealth, not only for themselves, but society. Don't forget, people don't get wealth just because they're greedy. They get wealth because other people voluntarily uh, pay them their money. And they voluntarily part with their money only because they're getting something that they consider worth it. So when President Obama says he wants to spread the wealth around, what he's saying is he wants to insert the government into voluntary... Transactions. Transactions, which doesn't work. And do, it doesn't work for a very simple reason. Right. Uh, uh, the, the, people, the people at the high end of the, of the income scale don't just stand still to be sheared like sheep. They send their money overseas, as they're doing now. I was reading the other day about some company, you know, that, that needs some money for uh, expansion or whatever, uh, and they have overseas branches. Now, they're making that money overseas, but they're borrowing money here instead of bringing it home. And they don't bring it home because it'll be taxed to death if they bring it home. Now, you keep raising the taxes, and they'll do more and more of their businesses overseas. Uh, and the, the jobs that are created will be created overseas. So this, this is not, wh whether they have high or low taxes on the rich is going to affect the rich a lot less that is going to affect people who are looking for jobs and, and, and people who have small businesses like hardware stores and whatnot who can't move overseas. How come you see that and Barack Obama doesn't? 
Oh my goodness! Well, he's his whole life has been spent among people who have an entirely different vision of the world. Different from from ordinary Americans. Different from you. Both. All right, and their vision. Uh, well, well they, they, for one thing, it, it tends to be a one-step vision. They, they don't they don't say what are going to be the repercussions of this if I do this, uh, and so they think that you know we, we shouldn't have tax cuts for the rich. You see, because that, that, the rich don't, don't need it, don't deserve it, and so forth. And, so and the, their analysis ends there. And it ends there. Right. Whereas if you look back through history, you find that when you had very high taxes on upper income people, uh, you didn't collect as much revenues in many cases as you did with high, lower tax rates. One more video clip, Tom, if you don't mind. It's hard to argue against that. Warren Buffett's secretary shouldn't pay a higher tax rate than Warren Buffett. <laughs> It is wrong that in the United States of America, a teacher or a nurse or a construction worker who earns $50,000 should pay higher tax rates than somebody pulling in $50 million. Explain why somebody who's making $50 million a year in the financial markets should be paying 15% on their taxes when a teacher making $50,000 a year is paying more than that, paying a higher rate. They ought to have to answer for that. And if they're pledged to keep that kind of unfairness in place, they should remember the last time I checked, the only pledge that really matters is the pledge we take to uphold the Constitution. <laughs> so, by the way, I have to make a brief factual correction. He referred to Warren Buffett's having made $50 million. Warren Buffett later announced that last year he made $62 million. Yeah, well, let's not underestimate <laughs> Warren Buffett. <laughs> All right. So, but he kept, the President of the United States kept talking about the prima facie unfairness of a secretary, what did he say, a teacher or a nurse or a construction worker paying a lower, a higher rate than a hedge fund manager or one of the richest men in the world, Warren Buffett. Now, th there's something to that, isn't there? One of, this, one, of, one of Barack Obama's great gifts is the ability to say things that are absolutely absurd <laughs> and make them sound not only plausible but inspiring. First of all, the vast majority of taxes are paid by people in the upper 10% of the end company. So the whole picture that he's painting there has no relationship to reality. It may well be that if someone has capital gains that they will pay a lower rate of taxation in a given year. Of course, capital gains are not there in a, in a given year. Uh, they, you may have stock options accumulating over five or ten years and then in one year when you uh, when you cash them in, that year you have a spike in your income. Right. Uh, and so the, the capital gains tax takes into account the fact that this wasn't all earned that particular year, even right. though you got it that year. Right. So, you know, it's, 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 it's ludicrous, but, it, but it, it's, it's, it's very clever ludicrousness. Mm.